Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Now we get you've really got to know to kick the foot, otherwise you're yeah screwed. Hello, friends. People often ask me how to set a boulder, how I set a boulder, how to set a boulder in general, which is way more difficult uh, than a setter can climb. So I looked through my archive and thought, like, let's do an episode about this. That's my Christmas present to you out there. Maybe it helps, maybe not. Otherwise, you'll just see us setting a boulder. Three things always help me. Uh, right holes and the right angle of the wall. Two, don't overcomplicate things. Three, get some strong testers on board uh, or people you know well who climb more harder, difficult than you. Of course, that's not the only way how to do it, but these are like three things which always help me a lot if you're under time pressure, have limited resources, uh, and also don't know the gym or the testers and you cannot experiment. If you have a lot of time, uh, resources and whatsoever, no time pressure, then you can go experiment and then maybe I'll do another episode about how we experiment with stuff which is way more difficult. Uh, let's get back. So a few weeks ago I was at Hang uh, in London visiting my friends for the second birthday party and Jake asked me to set the most difficult physical qualification border. I wanted um, a power test piece. Uh, as you can see the panel was a little bit more wide, uh, wider than two and a half meters. Uh, the wall angle, something between moonboard and moonboard, so I guess like something about 30 degrees. So I had the right angle, the right holes. Uh, when it comes to physical stuff, I want uh, non-cheatable holes. So always look for some directional, functional holes tapered on one side and on the other side other like crimpy, slopey, uh, different kind of angles so you can just like replace one with the other. You will see how this works out in the video. Uh, so I picked the Captain Crux curb stones and um, they are all like a little bit like curved, uh, like a little banana uh, tapered on this one side but the other side is always like slightly tilting inwards, um, more inclined, less inclined and they have like uh, for two hands uh, or for one hand hold sizes so everything what I needed to set a border. Don't overcomplicate things. So a lot of setters or like a lot of newer setters or a lot of ambitious setters try to especially when it's above your limit, try to mix a double toe catch uh, release into a palm down uh, flag resulting into uh, running move afterwards and this all combined in a, this all in around 6B, 6C, which is literally impossible. So when it's above your limit, start a little bit easier and don't overcomplicate things, especially if you are in a rush or under some pressure, um, if you want to keep it safe. So I wanted to keep it safe, I wanted to make it like easy, tweakable, so I thought, okay, steep wall, what's a good move, get people going, a campus move, but not only one to two, no, a campus move into a side pole and then the momentum can only be stopped with a volume. So campus, side pole, kick to stop the first move. You're almost halfway up the wall, another move, dead point move to a little crimp, this can be adjusted because it was horizontal above a lip, uh, either with the size of the crimp or uh, the direction into Gaston or into open squeezing. And this move was supposed to be hard because the volume is not horizontal, but vertical. Uh, then you have to apply pressure sideways. I will show you all of this later. And then just another move afterwards. So only three moves and uh, quite easy to tweak, as you will see. Point three, get some testers on board. I'm quite lucky, privileged most of the times when I work somewhere that I know the people and uh, I know Jake, uh, Tom and Joe quite well. They're all pretty good at physical stuff. Um, I know that Joe and Tom sometimes need some time to get into physical mixed with momentum stuff they never climbed before, especially this first move. People think they often have to pull like only upwards. You will see Joe struggle a little bit and then immediately at some point it makes click and you learn the process, mix power with a little bit of uh, precision, dynamic and then you're good to go. 
let's get into the video. Oh no, before we get into it, if you like more of these videos, let me know in the comments what would be helpful for, which topic you want to hear or listen to, see. Um, as always, thanks to Kleinpol sending me over and Hang, my friends in London, giving me the space to do whatever I want most of the time. If you want to be updated about new videos, I will make more videos in the near future because I got a lot of footage lying around here. And in winter time, I don't like to go outside. Hit the bell, hit the subscribe button and uh, get updates about new videos and let me know what you want to see more of. Okay, let's go. You just touch the tape box with your feet and then your campus and then your foot plant. It's kind of really powerful. Good boulder, well done. Nice. Nice. Step by step observation number one. The start hold was way too horizontal, so you could pull and crank down vertical to the second hold. Observation two, the second hold was also too horizontal, so you could just pull straight down on it, which enabled you to change focus after you did the move. So you campused up first, then Joe held the side pull, and then he focused and tilted his head to the right, and then in step three, he kicked out with his right foot. To set a complex move, you kind of have to do a lot of things right and at the same time or like just in a limited time frame. And here, because the holes were tilted too easy, too horizontal, uh, Joe was able to break down all these movements in micro movements, do it step by step, which I didn't want. It. Observation three. Yeah, as mentioned before, the side pull wasn't side pulley enough, so it was too easy to pull towards the right and uh, observation four, of course, we didn't need the second intermediate bumping hold to go to the crimp above the lip because it made the movement way smaller, like you had an intermediate and the way for your left arm wasn't as big, wasn't as risky, wasn't as powerful, wasn't as far, wasn't as wide. So I eliminated this as well. So, I don't know if I love that. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think with the karate kick, there's enough momentum taking you there. I don't know. Yeah, that's nice. Now we get it. You've really got to know to kick the foot, otherwise you're, yeah, screwed. Nice. Uh, as you hit it, you want to imagine you kick the foot there. I mean, I, I, maybe you can grab it and beat it. We also need to figure out the start position a little bit. It works. Can you tap the feet? What? So, excuse, <laughs> excuse me? Well, I'd like this to be flatter. Yeah. So I can do it. That would be good. Are you a solid V8 climber? No, Nowadays. Uh, it was very easy. Yes. But it makes, it actually adds a whole thing. Uh, can you flick? Maybe if that little foot was just like a a sort of chip on the left side just to add like another starting position for your feet because we taped all the bowlers with four tapes. In the end we were too lazy to uh, look for to search for a dual texture hold in purple so we just taped a square. Why? Because Tom showed us how much he used the little jib on the left. He had a lot of like perches on it 
uh, a lot of pressure. It also pushed you to the right side while he still wrapped the left hand around starting hold. You were able to do this as well with the tape box, but you didn't have like any resistance, any foil to push away from. So we did some cheap setting to force everyone uh, starting with the campus and giving no one the benefit of their height or their length for the first move. First away, I think. Yeah. Yes! Pretty good. Stop. Oh, yeah. No. Nope. Yes, yes. Yeah, let's see. Uh, uh. Yes! Yes! Yeah, yeah. One box fits it. One box fits it. What? When I, when I hit this move, I'm, I'm like here, yeah. and the barn door is so savage. You've got a slightly longer spine, you feel like you chill into it. It's like not a thing, but maybe it's fine. Yeah? Yeah, I, I was yeah. like. replicate, uh, do a variation of this um, and you are not strong enough, what I can suggest doing is uh, just use some down climbing jugs, just get some jugs and you start from campusing one jug to the next jug. Uh, always keep uh, the basics of campusing and swinging in mind. It's not about your biceps, it's about creating momentum. Anyway, so jug to jug, then you tilt the second jug more and more sideways until it only works with a foot plant volume. And of course, you always have to imagine that you cannot keep on to the first jug. So first you do the distance, then uh, with the second side pull, you determine like where does the foothold need to be. Like the higher it is, the more you need to kick upwards, which makes it really hard. And um, the more tilted the start hold is, the more difficult the first move gets. And then it's just like it's root saying, it's not a, it's not a not a science, just try and try and try and try and especially the angles, 20 degrees, something like this, 20 degrees and a little bit steeper works pretty well because you can start pulling, but uh, you also don't have to pull that much further outside of the wall. Um, give it a try, hopefully this helps you, if not uh, let me know or if you want to get into the basics of campusing, I did not add this thumbs up, I hope you give this a thumbs up or uh, this this is just my MacBook doing because I don't have all my stuff with me. Um, yeah, Merry Crisis, Christmas, thingy. Bye.